All right. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, I know we'll have more people join us here. I get the ding dongs that when people join. I hope you guys don't hit, get to hear that all the time. Good, good. All right. So I have tried to use AI more this semester just to um, maybe help students get more engaged in my assignments and just see what it can do for me. And so I wanted to share with you some of the things that I've done. And we will go to the next slide here. So one of the things I've done is to reimagine my assignments with AI. So to engage the students with real world re relevance. So for instance, um, I use the prompt, suggest 10 ways to make this assignment more motivating, engaging, and relevant to college age students, and then copy in a, in an assignment. So here's my assignment that I start, started with. I did control A, control C to paste it in. Let me just go and open up um, chat here. And I am using the free version right now. So I, I would paste that in and I just say, let me see if I can copy this so I don't have to type it all over again. Suggest, suggest 10 ways to make it more exciting. So put that at the top. I paste my assignment below it. I go ahead and tell it to go ahead and do it. And it says, here are 10 ways to make it more motivating for relevant and engaging for college age students. And it talks about some real world scenarios, personalize the data, gamification, team collaboration, incorporate videos. I wanted to focus, most of my assignments are just on real world scenarios. So I, I say, I want 10 ways um, using real world scenarios. And then it comes up with um, something. So small business budgeting, event planning, personal finance tracker, travel plans, because what my assignment was, was just a boring budget. Here you have your expenses. And, you know, I told them everything to do. There was nothing that they had to do with it. Just follow the handout. This is what it will look like when it's done. So I did that to it. And um, let me show you what it actually, if I click on that chat prompt, you can see when I walk through the whole assignment process here. Okay, so if I go back up to the top, I asked chat, there's my ways to do it. And I copied my assignment and it came up with the things that it said. And it went so forth. And I said, let's do assignment number four, which I should have just said not assignment number four, but let's do the travel budgeting one using the tilt assignment method. And that's the method that we talked about in colloquium where it just helps students know things better. And here it actually says, sure, I'll break it down into purpose, task, and criteria for success. And so I came up with this assignment here for me, open up a workbook, merge these cells. So it's actually using quite a bit, uh, when I look at it here, this looks very similar to my original one, but it did reword things in a little better way to understand um, things for me there. And then it came up with criteria for success. Um, and I said that I wanted to have a little more explanation for the students when they're doing it. And then it thought I meant explanation. And I'm like, no, I don't want an explanation. So I stopped it. And I said, no, I don't want explanation. I need more help for them when they are doing this. They are new to Excel. Oh, okay, here's what we will we'll do. And they walked the student through what they needed to do and formatted it there. Um, but then I said, go ahead, make the whole assignment, make sure you use the tilt method. And it came up here with my purpose. By the end of the assignment, you will do this, your task, 
and so forth. I think at the very end, I said that I wanted to have a rubric as well and that it was worth 30 points. And it gave me a rubric. I didn't like this rubric and I am not one who's used rubrics often. So I don't even know how to word it to get the right information that I need. But what I did is I just changed it to say, um, give me a simplify, a simple rubric. And then it came up with something more of what I was looking for, something just simple saying this many points for that. What I, what I found interesting is though that chat can't add things. Let's see, 10, 6, 16, 20, well, this time it did 30. But most of the times I can't get chat to actually find out, um, to add it up to 30 for some reason. So that is what I've done for asking it to get some more motivating, engaging and relevant information. Um, any questions with that or comments? The next way to engage students or to reimagine assignments is to enhance the clarity. And that thing called tilt method, which I've never heard about before, purpose, task, and criteria. So there is something in chat that you can click on when you're in chat You can explore these GT, GPTs, custom ones that people have done. And there's one that was called Tilt Assignment, Assignment Creator. And so once I've used it, it pops up here on the side. But what it does is then I can simply give it, a, give it an assignment and tell it to fix it. So here was my assignment before, the one I just actually handed out in class. And I've used this assignment for years. I don't have a purpose. I don't have criteria. I'm not telling you what to do. I am just tell. okay, I tell you specific what to do, but they don't really grasp the whole thing. So all I did was copy and paste, control A, that whole thing into here. And I say, I said, re, you know, redo this assignment and paste it in there. And here it says, this is the assignment using the tilt method. The purpose of this is to develop your skills working with pivot tables in Excel. Good to know. And actually this was useful when I was doing presenting yesterday because I'm like, oh, I can tell them we're using filters and slices. Whereas before I'm like, I don't know, you know, I knew what the assignment was, but it really details it out here. Plus what I liked is it has all these things that talk about, you know, this is what we're going to do in this step is data cleaning. We're going to create a pivot table. We're going to adjust the layout. It just, it does take up three pages instead of my two pages, which I hate because I hate. But I think as a student, you can see that, you know, looking, this is my original one. This is the one that looks like when I'm done. In fact, let me go one step further. I, yeah, we're still in the free version. I'm going to go ahead and say, save as a Word document. We could copy and paste it, but it also can save it as a Word document for you to download after a little bit of time here. I don't know how much time. I may let it think, but you could also just copy and paste that. Well, let's let it, okay, there we go. Okay, download pivot table. Here's your Word document. Let's download it. Open it up. <clears throat> and there we have our document. Although, you know what? I don't think that's the same. And that's the thing with um, chat, you have to keep telling it, no, you didn't, you don't, you didn't do everything because you can see here that it gave it a one, two, three. I wanted to keep that. Whereas the results, there's no one, two, three, like telling it what I'm doing for each step. So somehow it still didn't get things right. So, you know, 
it is what it is. You use some things. You could easily just copy this and let's see if I can go up here and get it because this is what I want, this format right here. So copy, go into create a new document and paste it in. That's what I want, you know. There I have an assignment, revise for me in two seconds. You do have to go through it and make sure it included everything because when I went through it, I'm like, where did you take that whole section? Or you're not explaining this type of thing, but that's, I mean, Susan, you're the, Susan and Pam, you're the education experts. Is this a lot better than my original one to have it like this or does it really not matter? It always matters a great deal if the students have in their minds what the goals are, because then that gives them the opportunity to be successful on their own, to take the steering wheel. If they don't know what the goals are, they just float around in the activities that you're doing, and they may not ever know if they ever learned anything. Yeah, yeah. Good. Um, let me go ahead and close those. Any questions Well, before we move on here? All right, so that was the um, using the TELP assignment creator. A couple of things I've added this year was also something called above and beyond. And I will tell them, you know, five points. You can, you know, use AI to come up with some idea of what you can do to take this topic and expand on it. And, you know, they struggled with it, um, but they also, I think I saw a couple people that really enjoyed doing it. And plus it was just going above just what I assigned to them. And then Susan and Pam, of course, know that the reflection part is huge and I've never done reflection before. And I've started doing this. And I think that what I've seen from students is that they'll be like, yeah, I struggled with this, but then I figured it out or I used AI to do that. And so I, I think, again, it's just that has nothing to do with AI. The first one does, but the reflection doesn't. Um, but anyway. All right, then we have, this was interesting, AI powered lecture enhancements. So I have, um, wanting to take a YouTube and I wanted to summarize the YouTube. So here I have um, YouTube right there that I want to summarize. So I can copy that link, paste it over here. I thought it was signed in, workspace. And I can paste it in here and I can tell it to summarize now. And I think the first time yeah, so apparently you get two certain quotas. It looks like maybe I have 15 free quotas down here. So I'm going to go ahead, um, continue summarizing that. And there's probably other ways. Has anyone used anything different to summarize YouTubes? No. But I mean, here you can see what their summary is of this text that we had here. That's one way that I've used it, but I've also used something to summarize a whole lot of data. So if you have a textbook that you have online, um, and I don't have a textbook, but I do have, what I have my students do is, let me see if I'm going to stop this here. They watch these videos. For adding some heading, and I was wanting to create some kind of handout to give them that covers the information on these videos that they watch because they watch like 10 hours of the videos. Well, all of these videos have transcripts. So if I was to click here on the transcript, I can go ahead and just copy that transcript and students can do it too then, of course. Um, come back into chat and I can just say summarize 
transcript. I don't even think I would have to write transcript. Just summarize and paste it in there. And it comes up with, you know, my key points, uh, margins, global reset, application tips. Um, and if I thought that that wasn't enough, I could say, give me more explanation. And I don't think I typed that wrong, uh, right. And so this is what I've actually done in class is I've handed this out, we've gone through it. They don't have a textbook, so they go. we go through this. Of course, I have to make sure it makes sense and it's saying the right things. Um, but that's one way that I can easily summarize stuff. Um, and then another thing I can do is enrich it. So let's say for that one where I did it here, if I want to get some real world examples, I could come back here and say, okay, give me some real world examples on how to use this. So it talks about, okay, if we have buttons on a website, the padding means this, the margin means that. If we have an image, this is what it means and so forth. So I think all of you could probably use something like that in your um, work that you do. Has anyone done something similar to this? I I was thrilled when I came up with this, well, thrilled. I. I actually had told the students last year when we had this class, because I was making them take the notes. And then I'm like, I told them, well, you could just come here and copy and paste the transcript and put it into chat and summarize it. But finally this year, I'm like, well, you know, I could use that as my teaching aid anyway. So we go through it before they watch it and then they watch it and anyway, so it's been fun. Um, Next one here, um, idea generator, um, topic exploration. Eric was talking about how he uses it to give ideas. And I think a lot of you have done that. Here's a link to Howie's presentation that he had as well as his prompt. Um, I don't think I'll go more into that one. To do quizzes. Um, I found this interesting. I had come across quizzes has an AI generator in it. So if you log into quizzes and you want to create an assessment, and I'm going to, I think I have links here to my notes also for my class. So I took my notes for the whole, um, chapter, you know, we're having exam two coming up. So I took all my notes, I copied them, I pasted them, I put them into generate with AI. I can do my text prompt, paste my content. There's my content. Uh, it looks like I met my max. Okay, we're good. And I'm going to say an automatic number of questions and I'll go ahead and say continue. And it comes up with questions based off of the material I gave it. And so I can give those as an activity in class where they can actually see it together. And let me see, I'm going to stop it and see if I can come back to what I've done before. So my library. So again, there's a, a limit unless you want to pay money, which they always want to have money. Um, but here we had an in-class thing where they, you know, our typical Kahoot type of thing where they all sign in and they can do some little games, fun stuff. I don't know. I think it was fun. So that was a nice way that AI uses it. Um, exam cust customization, Gary Dickerson uses it to generate exam questions for it. 
Um, and here my rubric de development, which I talked about before, double check the number of points though, because that doesn't always come across right. This one is where I, I think I enjoy the most. And this is to have the kids start using AI to do some information gathering. Now, I don't think that this is necessarily relevant sources and data. So I think I'd have to change what I said there, but I will put this in their assignment. I will say, use chat or other AI and give me the following and give it the following prompt. So if I do that and paste it here in chat, and you'll see here what I'm wanting it to do. Um, so let's, I'm gonna back up a second. So I teach a class using pivot tables in Excel. And so I have my boring data that they don't really care anything about. So I have them go through my stuff and then I have them, I want them to have AI create some data sets for them. And so I will say, give me, I tell it to pop in there, give me ideas for different sets, data sets based on, and let's say um, Kansas City Chiefs. I don't even know if that's right. Wait until I choose one of those data sets. If I don't like any, I will ask you for more ideas. Create a data set with 40 rows. Give me a pivot table, ideas for pivot tables. Explain how to use conditional formatting. So that's the prompt I'm telling chat to do. So the student will paste this in there. And here are some ideas that it said, okay, we could do some player statistics by season. Okay, I don't think that my Kansas City Chiefs, oh, never mind. I'm going to not say anything. I'm not a sports person. Okay, so let's just say, let's go with, um, we're going to proceed with number one. Let's say data set number one. And so it's going to analyze it here and it's going to come up with the data set for me that students can paste into it, I think. Yeah, here we go. So here it comes up with some imaginary data. No, okay, it was supposed to continue. Um, I want all 40 rows. I'm very, very obnoxious to chat and probably other people as well. <laughs> So there you can see, it's just generating the data for me. And so students can now just take that data, copy it into Excel, and then create, I'm going to go ahead and, not the Jew. and then just paste it into here. And then it will, you know, chat said, what are some ideas of, what are some ideas for pivot tables? And it says you can do some total touchdowns by player or season, and it tells it what to put into those values into the different places where it's at. So I thought that was um, fun for the students. I will have to say that as with everything, when you're creating assignments, sometimes it doesn't always work the first time around and you have to just revise things, but you've all been there with that. Um, this one I haven't used, but I just came across it. It's something called Notebook LM Google and the college has not opened it up. So you would have to be on your personal Gmail account to do that. But it's a something that could put things together. Okay, and then just our typical, you know, students can get support. Now the problem with this, and I've already found this out, that I had, you know, a couple students 
I don't know what to do for the test. I, I'm lost. And I said, well, how did you do the assignments? I just ask AI to do them all. Well, you can't, you know, and I remind them that all the time. You need to use chat because chat can do a lot of the things or at least give you the answers on how to do it. And so I know I have one student that I don't know if he'll make it through the class because he didn't start, you know, doing his own work to start with. Uh, and I think I'm getting close to the end here. Well, almost. So one thing I found, I don't know if any of you hate grading essays or papers or even short answers. I hate that because it's like, well, they're sort of right, but they're sort of wrong. And did they even know what they were talking about? So what I've done a couple of times is I will just, copy and paste the answer into chat and say, is this correct? And it will be like, well, it's partially correct. This part is correct and this part isn't. And I'm like, ah, you know, I can finally see like, where was the student even thinking when they replied that? Um, one time I did do a uh, final paper report. Um, I gave it the report and I gave it the rubric and I thought the students should get hardly anything for it. And it, but it gave it, you know, it gave it maybe a B and maybe a C for some of it, but it gave a reason why. And that's what I needed. Like, I don't have the words. I'm not a wordy person. Give me a problem to solve and I'll solve it. But so I found that to be really helpful for doing that kind of thing. And I know I've been going way too fast, please. Holler if you have any questions about anything. Oh, because we're going to get to the next part. I think this is going to be my, yes, my gamma presentation. Um, so meeting planning, I did for even this that I created here. Um, I gave it some ideas of what I was going to cover in this assignment. And then it it organized it all. I had to give it several different prompts, but it organized it until I, I got it in a way that I liked it. Um, but then I wanted it, how we had talked about using gamma. And so that's what I'm using for this is the gamma um, presentation. How he said that it only did eight um, slides for free, but it will generate eight, but you can add more onto it for free because mine is a lot more than just eight for it. And let me see if I can go out when I'm actually presenting here. So all you have to do is just pop it in, do create a new AI and pop in the material. And I can show you that later if you wanna do that. And then it will create the presentation for you. And let me pull this one up. It is pretty simple to make changes to it as well because I didn't like everything that it came with, but it was easy to do. And then I can download the PowerPoint and share it as well, or just run it from here, which is what I'm doing. Did you guys have any, did you look to see at some of these Slides, which one was it here? Maybe we haven't seen it yet. So these are all AI generated and yeah. So this lovely one that says assignment, is that, are those words actually assignment? And does this really spell purpose and criteria? It's like, why can't you get it right? Like, are they doing this on purpose or anyway? <laughs> So, and then I think this is criteria down here. Anyway, quite interesting. But that was, that was nice. Um, and then we just have the ethical considerations, um, make sure that they don't enter in private information into it and know that it can be biased um, make sure we align with our standards, which I think we all have. I think our standards are we just need to tell students what we expect of them. 
my personal thing is that we can just expect that they will use it um, and we have to figure out a way around it if we want to grade them on their knowledge. Um, and the one thing I do like this inclusivity, make sure that they're, as the tools are accessible to all students. So I use the paid version of chat, but I always check to make sure that um, they can do it with the non-paid version or they can use Microsoft Edge or Gemini or something similar to that. And I think this was just the final slide there. So any questions or comments? It's really clever that you've made your slideshow to show us through Gamma. Yeah. <laughs> Impressive. Well, Susan, we're going to get you on here next, so. Um, Debbie? Yes, Trudy. I was wondering a little bit more about the above and beyond, I think. OK. About how you actually, you you know, w what is going on in the process as you're using it? Sure. The teacher turning off their phone there. Um, let me show you what I've done for some of my classes. I mean, just the one class that I've done here. Um, so for me, I have Let's see if that one is the old one or the new one. I guess you know. So for me, I have, yeah, this is the old one. Since they're using Excel, they can, Excel has some built-in um, AI stuff. For instance, oh, I can't show it because it's Microsoft 365. So part of it is I would tell them that's not it either. Let's put it in order by name here. Backwards, yep, I can do backwards. Here we go, personal budget. So, for the above and beyond, I said, now that you've got your basics down, it's time to take your spreadsheet to the next level. And this was probably AI generated. Um, this is all about exploring new features and adding personal touch to your work by creating another chart, experimenting with advanced tools um, and so forth. Um, click on the anal uh, analyze data tab and explore options. You can make it not just functional, but insightful and visually appealing, not my words. Um, <laughs> and so that's what I do for the above and beyond is that kind of thing where it just takes it to something more creative where they can do their own thing. Okay. I love the title of that. That's very inviting yeah. and not intimidating. Yeah, yeah. I do make it worth points and, you know, I, I, I need to still figure out all that point business because somebody didn't do, somebody didn't do the reflection or the above and beyond. And I think I had them worth five points each. So they ended up getting what a 70% on their assignment because they didn't do that. Um, so for this one, you know, the reflects, discuss your experience in, in Excel. How did the charts help you quickly see where you spent too much money? Share any challenges. Note the enhancements you made above and how they added value to the analyst analysis. So I like how specific that is. Yes. Par pardon? I like how specific the reflection is that you don't just get people yeah, and in fact, I need to make it a little bit more specific because we need to know what are those five, what are those three things you did here? And and they just, you know, said, oh, I did this and this and this. And it's like, well, where and exactly what did you do? So, right. Yeah. 
Hmm. Any other questions or comments? I'm glad that you're going to share the slides with us so that we can go back and look at those different links of things yeah. that will be very helpful. Yeah. Appreciate that. Well, and I tried to um, make sure to include the links to my actual prompts as well, so that if you wanted to see, you know, how I worked through asking at various questions until I got to the answer I wanted, um, you can see that. Because when I summarized it, when I copied all that data, I said, I want it to be in no format to hand out to the students. Okay, well here, and that was way too nothing. Give more examples, you know, and it you just have to keep telling it, what is it that you're actually wanting for that? All right, does anyone else want to do any sharing next time besides Susan? All right, well, thank you guys for joining me. Thanks for all your hard work. This is impressive. Awesome. We've learned a lot in a Thank short you. while. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye.